Hey, Clemson family, the Tigers are going to line up Saturday afternoon trying to clinch a spot in the ACC championship game. I'm Daniel Shirley. What uniforms are they going to wear? No, we're not doing that conversation. <laughs> we're not going to break that down. We're going to break down the Louisville game uh, and see how Clemson can bounce back from probably its worst performance we've seen in several, several years. I'm Bill Zimmerman. Welcome to episode 40 of the Reign Supreme All-Way podcast. You can find all our episodes at our homepage, clemsonkickoff.com. We're on Twitter, Instagram, at Clemson Kickoff for each of those. Appreciate everyone checking us out on youtube.com slash Clemson Kickoff. Give us a quick subscribe or a follow wherever you like to keep up with us, and we'll make sure you get to hear every episode. Here we go. The Tigers trying to bounce back from just a gut-wrenching loss at Notre Dame. Didn't come to play in that contest. And now the home win streak in Death Valley is on the line. What do they need to do to bounce back? And what about Louisville is going to make that tough? Well, I think we need to see some leadership from this team. I don't think we saw any last week, but now's the test. What do you do when things are tough? What do you do when things aren't going well? That's what we're going to need to see from this team. And where's that going to come from? That's a big part of this for me, Bill, because I... I've got some issues with this team and some questions with this team and and need to see some answers, I think, on Saturday. If they come out and slop around like they have the last couple of weeks and maybe look like they did last year, then where are the answers going to come from? That's going to be a big piece to the puzzle, I think. Well, one good place to get an answer would be by running the football, which the Tigers did not do in South Bend, should be able to do against a less physical Louisville defense, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I would think so. I mean, I I really believe Notre Dame's probably the most physical team Clemson's going to play during the regular season. I know NC State was, Syracuse was uh, to some extent, but Notre Dame really punched Clemson in the mouth on both sides of the ball, and Clemson just didn't respond. Again, I'm not as deep into the X's and O's, and, and why didn't they respond? Was it scheme? Was it players not doing their job? You know, the, the coaches have said it was a little bit of everything. But they didn't respond to it, and we've got to see them respond this week. And, and we'll see if they can. I mean, obviously obviously, Malik Cunningham is, is the focus of this game, I think, for the Clemson defense. I mean, he is the leading passer and, and the leading rusher on the team for Louisville. He's got 11 touchdowns rushing. He's only thrown for eight. But, I mean, he's been pretty consistent, pretty accurate, not, and he is a talent. And we've seen that from him. Uh, the last couple of years when Clemson has played them. So you, it all starts with him. Clemson has to find a way to get him corralled. They have to find a way to keep him under control. And if they don't, then it, there's going to be some problems, I think, for the defense. And we've seen some issues for this defense all year. You know, I think it's a, a, a good defense. I don't think it's a great defense. And we went into this season expecting it to be a great defense. What's the cliche gap integrity? Everybody needs to fill their spots. And, you know, I saw something the other day. I've been harping a lot on the defensive ends or maybe linebackers not being in the right spot with the edge getting set. I've also seen some comments, uh, some reports around the Internet that maybe the cornerbacks aren't doing their part to set the edge. <laughs> Look, whoever it is, got to be fixed. I mean, someone like Malik Cunningham, when Clemson has done well against Cunningham, when Clemson has done well against predecessor Lamar Jackson at Louisville they've done so by filling every place that the opposing quarterback might be able to go might be able to take off with a ball and then reacting and shedding a block and making a hit when the quarterback does go ahead and take to the ground and and run with the ball well we've got to be physical the entire team needs to be more physical than it was Saturday night I don't think there's anything any doubt about that they they got dominated up front on the offense and on defense. And I know the defense really, if you kind of look at it, only gave up 14 points uh, with the pick six, the block punt, and then the short field on the other interception. But they still gave up 200 and something yards rushing uh, and got pushed around. And that just can't be the case. And, I, and I'm and i really surprised by that, Bill. I, I, I am. I thought this defensive line, we talked about this defensive line during the offseason, and people were saying it had a chance to be right up there with the great Clemson defensive lines, and it just has not been. I, you know, and I don't even mean just the group from the last decade. The group that we grew up on in the 80s was much better than what we've seen from this group. And I know it's a different game now, too, but those 80s defensive lines were really, really good, and they got the job done. 
this defensive line's really good, but it hasn't gotten the job done. So we'll see. They're they are going to have to be focused on their own job. They're going to have to be focused on not trying to freelance because if you freelance against Malik, he can light you up. And we saw a little bit of that last year where he got out of control against this defense a little bit. So I think that's a, the huge piece to this puzzle. If you can hold him under control, then then defensively you can get the job done. And then what are we going to see on offense? I, I have <laughs> like zero idea of what we're going to see from the Clemson offense Saturday. Probably less than I've had in a long time. Even last year. Last year you kind of could write it off to everything was just kind of a disaster. The, the injuries, the lack of continuity, all that stuff. And you could say, okay, you know, that was kind of a one-off year. But now here we are, a second straight year, and they're having some of the same issues. Now, it's only been two games, but the issues have returned. And how are they going to get that fixed? And that's going to be a big piece, too, to seeing where the leadership comes from to get those things fixed on Saturday. Yeah, I don't want to rehash too much from the last episode. There certainly wasn't enough running of the football last week. What What's the old phrase I remember – uh, back when I used to be a Dallas Cowboys fan, they wanted the WD-40 offense. They wanted Walker and Dorsett, 40 carries combined. Give me DJ and Shipley, 40 carries combined this week. You know, give me – throw Maffa in that mix too if you want to add it up that way. I, you know, DJ, Shipley, and Maffa for 50 total maybe. I mean, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Tell that offensive line to go into this game, challenging them to have their best run-blocking game of the year and then throw the ball to complement that. That can open up spots where you can hit guys on slants, hit tight ends over the middle of the field. Come on, get away from the screen passes. I mean, okay, maybe a couple early to make the defense respect the width of the field, maybe one every now and then to make sure they have to stay spread out wide on defense. But come on, got to have a more vertical attack than what we saw last week. And hopefully – the offensive coaches and DJ Uyunglele will see the areas where they can make that happen in the game plan and on the field during the game. Yeah, Bill, where did that come from? Because I, you know, remember early in the season, they were throwing the ball down the field and DJ was playing well and he was getting the tight ends involved and all those things. Okay, and then you'll throw a screen pass to Shipley or you'll throw, uh, you know, a little quick out to one of the wide receivers. But that was the entire passing game almost on Saturday, it felt like that that was the entire game plan of throwing the ball was these quick little out throws to the to the tight end or the receiver and then have somebody out there blocking for them. And the blocking was terrible. So I want to see what we saw at the end of last year when, you know, when the passing game was struggling and they couldn't throw the ball at all. And like you said, give the ball to Shipley, give the ball to to, to Phil Moffa and let this offensive line do its job. And if they can't do the job, then you then you've respond after that and you adjust after that. But that to me has to be the focal point of this attack on Saturday. Run the ball, run the ball, run it some more, whatever you have to do to soften up that Louisville defense. Clemson in the last seven matchups against the Cardinals has been able to do that. 40.6 points a game over the last seven game against Louisville, according to Associated Press. I don't see that happening, but you know what? I'd be pretty happy if they could get to 30. Yeah, it, it does. You remember last year when they kept they couldn't get to twenty, right? And, and then they finally got to thirty, and everybody got excited about it. I, I'm with you. I think if you get to thirty, you win this game. Now, will the defense step up and do the job? I hope so. I think so. We need to see some pride from this team. We need to see some leadership from this team. And yeah, the coaches can lead, but it's got to be from the players. We hear it all the time that the best teams are led by the players. And th that has to happen if this team is going to bounce back from that loss on Saturday. And again, it's only one loss. If they win this week and beat Miami and beat South Carolina, you know, if we'd have told you at the start of the year they were going to be 11 and 1, I think after last year we would have taken 11 and 1. You know, you want them to be undefeated, but I think 11 and 1 looks pretty darn good. So, if they can do that then, then we'll forget that Notre Dame game. But right now, the wound is just too fresh. I just can't get past what we saw Saturday. And hopefully, 
this team can and play much better this week against Louisville. Because, look, Louisville's a good team. They've won four straight games. Uh, they're much different from the team that, that lost to Boston College. And when they lost that game, I thought, okay, that's Louisville's season. Because they had kind of stumbled around early and got blown out by Syracuse. And, Bill, there was even some talk about Satterfield being in trouble at that point. And, and one of those Sunday afternoon firings that we're starting to see a lot more in college football. But they've turned things around and won four straight games. Let's see if the Tigers can, can do that as they move forward from this Notre Dame game. Definitely a gut check for Clemson. You know, we talked a little bit in that last episode about how Clemson typically, after a blowout loss, doesn't let it spiral into something much worse. But then again, a couple of the most recent tough losses were not midseason. They were at the end of the season. They had the offseason to get things ready. A couple of things I don't like about this matchup. Cardinals are second in the country, 3.7 sacks per game. Their defensive leader is linebacker Momo Sanogo, a transfer from Ole Miss, had 13 tackles last week. And then just the opportunistic nature of this defense. When they had that six turnover quarter against Wake Forest, rip the ball away and just take control of the game. I mean, a little scary to think what if something were to unfold like that for Clemson. Another reason I feel like Shipley and Maffa really need to be the focal point for moving the ball. Uyunglele running it as well. I saw some talk that if you can get him running the ball, it gets him feeling a little better. Whatever you can do along those lines to make that happen and, and sort of get him in a positive headspace out there and then protect the football. Keep it simple. Don't try to do fancy handoffs. Don't try to do RPOs or, or you know, frequent uh, post-snap read when it comes to the running game, at least. I know that's what the passing offense is built on, but run-wise, keep it simple until you can't. Yeah, it protect the ball. They protect the ball last Saturday, and that includes special teams, right? I mean, we saw they, again, they gave away 21 points with just terrible mistakes. And that's what this team did early in the season. There were not these bunches of turnovers, but the last couple of games, we've seen those issues return. So, you know, Kyle Richardson, the, the the passing game coordinator, called it a funk this week. Hopefully he's right. Hopefully they can get out of this funk and then finish strong. We saw this team finish strong last year. There was a lot of leadership on that team last year. A lot of the same players. Look, if you say Clemson should win this game, yes, it should. But they probably should have won last week as well, and they gave the game away. So that's that's going to be a huge piece coming up Saturday afternoon. One other key, I think, to getting out of that funk is the defense and just staying confident. Like, I know they bent a lot. I know they gave up a lot of yards. I know they got overpowered against Notre Dame and that road grading offensive line. Okay, move past it. Have a short memory. Understand that really defensively, that wasn't where the bulk of the points came from in that game that undid the Tigers' ability to compete against Notre Dame. So go ahead Play the bend-don't-break scheme that has kept the Tigers in most games this year. Do what it takes to avoid that poor performance against Wake Forest. Don't let that happen again against Louisville. The bulk of the season, the defense has been able to keep offenses to a minimum of scoring. And then just, you know, especially if the offense can get to running the ball, control the clock, control possession, be a heck of a one-two punch, wouldn't it? It would, and start fast. The defense has kind of stumbled around early in a lot of games this year. Let's see it start fast. Let's see three and out on the first drive. A couple of three and out. We haven't seen a lot of that at times this year. So, and just the consistency. You know, we've talked about that. I mean, we're talking about this defense like it's given up 40 points. I think it's the expectations that we had for this defense, and it just has not shown it consistently. So, you know, let's let's see some leadership. Let's see some some pride. Let's see some consistency. And I think this team will be okay. And, and you know, and then you just kind of let things fall where they may and where you end up in the season. You're going to Charlotte. You're going to play in the ACC championship game. So, you know, let's get ready for that. But let's also focus on week to week. And Dabo talks about it all the time, being 1-0 and this week. And that kind of focus is what you're looking for. Let's see that on Saturday afternoon. And, and look, I hope the crowd hasn't hasn't given up on the team. I hope it's loud. I hope everybody's ready to support this team and really make it tough on Louisville. That would be great to see coming up in this big game. They got three games left. 
They're all at home. They should win. But let's see some big crowds coming up these next few weeks. Well, let's look at a couple of other Tigers teams real quick and talk about 1-0. and That is men's basketball after beating the Citadel 80-69 to on Monday night. And they'll have a big game coming up tonight against South Carolina. Yeah, it's weird this game being this early, right? We don't usually see South Carolina and Clemson play this early in the season. But uh, it's exciting that that game's already here. The team had a nice win Monday night over the Citadel. It wasn't pretty, you know, it wasn't great, but it was a get the job done kind of a game, I think. And and again, that might be what this team is until PJ Hall is back. Uh, I really liked what I saw from Chase Hunter. I, I'm I'm a big Chase Hunter fan. I love his game. Um, and he really led this team on Monday night. He's he scored 23 points, he had seven assists. He's playing point guard, but he's also probably your best scorer while P.J.'s not out there. Uh, and then Ian Shefflin played well as well with, with 20 points and 14 rebounds. And and you had a good game from Hunter Tyson, which I think is kind of what you are going to expect from him. Maybe more points in this game with 19 points and 13 rebounds. But he's kind of the the, the guts of this team, and you saw that. And, and they had a good lead. Uh, you know, Citadel went small and started shooting a bunch of threes, which is kind of what it does and they made 11 of them, but then Clemson responded after that and pulled away. So, again, it wasn't pretty. It wasn't something you say, okay, we're we're an NCAA tournament team after winning that game, hmm. but I think it was a solid start to the season. You know me. I don't allow myself to get into a lot of optimism about hoops until there are a couple games into the ACC schedule. So we'll see how it goes for them coming up. Totally agree, Bill. I'm with you. It's hard to have a whole lot of optimism about this program. Uh, I think it's an NCAA tournament or bust kind of a season, and that's a long shot right now. But we'll see. There's good players on this team. PJ's coming in a couple of weeks, late November, early December, and I think he would be a big lift to this team. But if they could win tonight against South Carolina, I think that would be a huge confidence boost for this team early in the season without him. And then moving along real quickly to men's soccer, these guys are playing confident five straight wins, and that has put them into the ACC tournament final. They were the eighth seed coming into the ACC tournament, 2-0 win over Wake Forest, and then Sunday they will take on number two seed Syracuse for the title. And they lost to Syracuse during the regular season, but that was also, Clemson was banged up at that point, and a lot of their, a lot of their best players weren't playing. It feels like this team is getting right at the right time. Three to one win over UMass. Okay, you'd expect that. But then they beat NC State three to nothing. They beat Notre Dame three to one. And then to go to Duke and go to Wake Forest uh, and win both of those games two to nothing. I think you got to be really excited about where this team is as it gets ready for the NCAA tournament run. So hopefully it can get another ACC title on Sunday. But it feels like this team is rounding in the form at the right time. Sure does. Freshman goalkeeper Joseph Andema, three shutouts during the five-game winning streak and eight shutouts on the year for him. So he's looking really in top form. All ACC freshman team member as named earlier this week. But also just some really creative goals the last couple of weeks. And I don't know if you follow Clemson Men's Soccer on Twitter and Instagram, but boy, it's it's a great way to see the highlights of just some amazing goal scoring. Yeah, I do. And Bill, they've kind of dominated these last two games. I mean, just if you watch the game, they've dominated the ball against Duke and Wake Forest. And those are really, really good teams. Uh, they had not played Duke in the regular season. They lost to Wake Forest. But they controlled the action uh, and, like you said, some really impressive goals uh, to, to put these games away and get these wins. And now let's go get some revenge on Syracuse, right? Syracuse beat you in the regular season. Let's, let's get this win and, and carry that over with some momentum into the NCAA tournament. The national championship defense continues with that ACC championship game on Sunday. If we're able to get over to the Triangle area, it's in Cary, North Carolina. Game kicks off at noon. If you can't, it's going to be on ESPNU, according to the Clemson Athletic Department. 
Well, we appreciate you finding this episode. We will update you after the Tigers game against Louisville, and maybe we'll wait to get in the results of that ACC championship soccer game as well. We are glad you found us, Clemson family. We hope you'll find us again for that next episode. Hit subscribe, hit follow if you're on a podcast app. That'll make sure that you get notified every time we post. Follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, at Clemson Kickoff, each of those accounts, and then the homepage, clemsonkickoff.com, where we'll let you know about kickoff times, including that Miami game that is still up in the air on a six-day hold. Well, until the next episode, I'm Bill Zimmerman. I'm Daniel Shirley. Go Tigers.